never seen a lame man walk Never heard a dumb man talk Never seen a blind man see I promise you a pain is me Never seen a cancer death Never seen all the poor get fed Never seen a prisoner set free I promise you a change is here What's up, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? It's your boy, Bigger, Bigger, Bigger T. And my man, as always, I'm joined by my man, my best friend from long, long ago until this very day, Big C, Clint. Clark, how you doing, buddy? It is great. It is hard to think that it has been it has been that long since you boys have been friends. Long so, I, so sixth grade, you think we're probably what eleven? Yeah, oh, 11? it was. I was eleven because I moved to Greenbrier at eleven years old. So yeah, eleven years old. So thirty six years. Thirty six. Six years. Um, That's right. Longer than most of you've been alive. We've been boys. And and here's the deal. Here, well, this is kind of. There's a couple in my church, Clint. Today is their 64th wedding anniversary. I don't know if I can get a woman to put up with me that long. I really don't. Like I, I can't get one to put up with me for one evening for a date. I can let alone. A, and I don't let, know why you're let you're, alone you're, a 64 you're, years. Hey, Holy God. cow! Listen, 64 stop. years. Stop, Travis. Listen. This one's for you, ladies. You want to reel in the big fish? The fish? The big, big marlin? There's a big marlin out there. Cast your lines. Hey, listen, I guarantee you, Travis Johnson will not be upset if you slide in his DMs. Probably. You know, don't slide in the big C, bigger T DMs because then I'd have to read it, and I don't want to see that crap. Slide in his personal DMs. Right. So there, there you go. I'm sorry, Travis. I that's just, that's okay. He's he's 47 and ready to mingle, y'all. That's right. Pushing 48, but woo, my man. Sorry, Travis. I had to get that. <laughs> I had to get that out there. That's Help right. My- that's all right. Appreciate appreciate you helping brother out. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah, ladies, come on. Well, hey, well, Clint, how's your week been? You- uh, you did something sort of exciting today, right? I did. You know, about a year ago, I bought cows. Mm-hmm. Today, we took them to to, to cow heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but it was it was still kind of exciting. This is the first time you know I've done it by myself and kind of been the the one that's like I didn't even have a pen mate when I when I moved here. Mm-hmm. So I had to build the barbed wire fence, and Paul came over and helped me and. We didn't punch each other one time. Yeah. Even though I did get a pretty good gash with, uh, gash with Bob wire on his arm, so he got mm-hmm. it pretty good. So I got to keep your head on a swivel, boy. That's right. Uh, so, but yeah, we took him to the processor today, so I'll have fresh beef in, uh, in a couple weeks. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, well, I, I had some, uh, and that's, okay, sad for the cows, but... um. Excited for the fresh beef. That's always a good thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, always you know, a good thing. And we took three of them, so you got about, I think, eight families going to be eating off those. So yeah. Well, uh, I had something interesting happen at school yesterday. One okay. of the things that, uh, well, I, you know, like most of you know, I'm a full time substitute. Okay, so I just they just kind of put me in and fill in wherever I need to go fill in or whatever. Yeah, have that made thing, you much lady this year? I mean. I, d- I did do lunch lady one of the first weeks, the first week of school. Okay, I remember last year that happened to me a couple times. Yeah, it was the first week of school I did. I wore hair net and all. But uh, now uh, one right. of the things I do oh. quite a bit is I cover for this one. Uh, he's actually the guy that hired me at the other school. Um, he's a principal, one of the principals, and he has meetings sometimes, but he also teaches elementary PE. 
And I used to volunteer at a Christian school doing elementary PE. So he knows that. I, in fact, I had his kids. And so he'll get me to cover his PE classes. And so yesterday I got to cover um, the second grade and first grade. Okay. And so a lot of times, you know, he does different things with them. So a lot of times when I'm just filling in, I'll just take him out to the playground and play. When it's colder weather, we go inside. I'll do different activities and games and stuff with them. But anyway, so I took them out to the playground outside. And uh, I got this little deal I do where I have them raise their hand and and take an oath to not be mean to each other and, and stuff like that. It's all fun and games. I make them make goofy noises. And anyway, so we get out there, and all of a sudden I look up and I hear – or actually I'm looking over one – some kids are playing and all of a sudden I hear over this way to my right. Happy. And Clint, two dogs come walking onto the playground. And these second graders just bombard these puppies. Okay. Now as the adult that's over these kids and trying to keep them safe, I don't know these dogs. Right now, logically, if a dog is coming toward a whole group of, you know, there's about 18 kids, something like that. But they see that, but it could be also with them dogs that see the 18 kids like there's that tender meat. Yeah, it could, they could be. <laughs> they could yeah. be thinking, hey, I can take one of these down. They're not much bigger than me. Well, because, yeah, you look at you and they're like, that one's going to yeah, be tough. I'm not <laughs> getting that one. I get but, that. But that one walking behind. You know, I can't get the big rhino, but the baby rhino I can take. 100%. Yeah, I okay. see where this is going. You see what, so I'm, so I'm, I'm worried, okay? And so, and I don't, but I don't want to be the bad guy, but I tell them, get away from the dogs. Let them be, okay? For some of those kids, it, well, it's like telling, you know, putting a piece, like a chocolate cake in the room and telling me to get away from it. It ain't going to happen, right? So some of the kids were just, you know, well, then I, I deal with them, okay? Then the second period I do, I got the first graders. And they come out, same thing happens. The dogs show back up. They're all around. And this one little girl, like, she keeps going back to them. She keeps going back to them. And so I call her over to me, and I say, I say, listen, you can't. I said, I said, what did I what did I tell you to do? She said to get away from the dogs. And what did you do? I went to the dogs. <laughs> I said, she and I said, well, I said, you, you gotta do what I ask you to do. That's I mean, that's part of the rules. And she said, but I know those dogs. <laughs> I said, well, I said, you do? She said, yeah. She said, they live close to me and they, my mom lets them in my house. And I said, I said, well, I understand that, but I don't know those dogs and I got to make sure y'all are safe anyway. So I had to explain to this little girl what it's like to be an adult in that situation. Yeah. But the only thing on her mind was puppy, puppy. I want to play with the puppy. <laughs> so anyway, um, it just, uh, it, it was just funny, man. It, Cause I'm thinking, Man, I sound like a horrible person telling these kids to stay away because the dogs were sweet dogs. They were just wanting to play with the kids. I probably could have just let them play and they would have been happy. Nothing would have happened, but I wouldn't have felt like an adult. <laughs> so anyway, it was crazy, man. But it was just uh, it's one of those things you look back, you think about it, and you're like, you're thinking about how funny it is that, you know, just the whole situation, you know. Yeah. But, uh, it's weird that we've both grown into that point in life where we're in rooms and we're like, we're the adult in the room. Yeah. Like, like even like, even with other adults, you know, you're a pastor of a church, you know, it's like there are these there are these people, these grown up people that are like looking to you for guidance, and you're like, When did this happen? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> When did I become what? responsible in the one in the room? That's right. Yeah. Like people are like, hey, you're the expert. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, trust well, me, and we guys, we, we just fake it. We are not the experts at all. Or we just all. pretend real well. Oh yeah, we pretend real well. We've got. So we're not afraid to tell you that we're pretending. Yeah, we're we're not. Yeah, we're like, hey man, we're figuring it out. That's right. If we screw it up, you'll know it when we know it. Well, hey, and uh, and lieu of holy snikies are yeah, kind of in the realm of holy snikies. It's, it's, it's not, real. When you break a record, Ben Alts is me and you were before me and you were graduated high school. You get this close to it. It's a holy snikies. All right, so lay it out there. So I believe Todd Day has the single game scoring record correct at 44 points. 43. Was it 43? And okay, so I'm 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 giving Khalif an extra point because he scored 42, right? Yeah. So 42 points against Missouri, which is a rival now, by the way. I just I don't know when it happened, but I freaking hate Missouri. I hope yeah. we get anything like like guys, it was it was fun. It was fun, but now we hate you. Yeah, uh, that's because of you, Eli Drinkwitz. That's right. The most slappable face in the SEC. That's right. And I bet you don't care that I think that, and yeah. you should. They um, should. So, um, but yeah, went off for forty two. Um, and you know, I was thinking about something just now. How how do you think this? Because we got Vanderbilt tonight. We'll play them Wednesday. It's a game we should win. Vanderbilt is pretty bad. Yeah. Um, not saying that we're great. We're not world beaters. But given, you know, the peaks that we had of beating Purdue, who I believe number one. Um, Houston's number one right now. Okay. Well, they, they've they been number one. Yeah. They're, they're going to be a one seed. Yeah. Um, beating Purdue in the preseason. Of course, that doesn't count. But you, we watched the game. Both of them coaches played it like it was a real game. Yeah. Um, and then beating Duke. Do you think if we'd had some of these easier conference games, like maybe open with Vandy, instead of like, you know, some of the teams that we opened with, instead of having Auburn early on, maybe had the Missouri games a little bit closer to the beginning, you think maybe this team would have found footing and confidence and it might have been better? Or do you think this team was just Duke? I, I think it was Duke from the locker room out. I think just there's something that's not meshing with them. And, uh, you know, I, I think they were Duke. But I want to get back to the Cleef battle thing real quick. Okay, I'm sorry. I, is that, that, that thought um, I had, I had to get it out. No, I, I, no, I think you're right. Um, it's a right way to – it's an interesting way to think about it. But I think we would have struggled. Uh, we did struggle with some – some not so good teams. We we struggled against some really good teams too. Um, we got out against some really good teams. So, um, but Rick Schaefer brought this up on Drive Time this afternoon, and I totally agree with him. I'm really proud for Khalif Battle getting that 42 points. Good for him. But I'm really happy he didn't break Todd Day's record. Because Todd Day broke it in Baton Rouge against LSU while they had Shaquille O'Neal. Okay. Todd Day's one of the best players to ever play at the University of Arkansas. Help yeah. bring help bring the University of Arkansas to new heights in basketball. It would you look go look back at it? He's one of the program builders. Okay. He's one of the guys. You know, you talk about when you talk about the people that the the benchmarks for Arkansas basketball, it's the triplets, it's the second triplets with Todd Daly, Mayberry, and Oliver Miller. It's the 94 team. And you maybe throw in Pat Bradley and Kareem Reed for a little while, the things they did. But I mean that those those are the the ones you hinge everything on. We're not <clears throat> Khalif Battle has started seven games. Okay. We may not even remember who Khalif Battle is next year. Well, but you're, just, yeah, no, I'm, I I'm, see, glad, I'm glad he didn't get the record. I see your point. But by that logic, by the way today's game is played, yeah. 
the, you, you're never, no one's ever going to be worthy to break that record. No. You see what I'm saying? Now, now, no, no, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Michael Jordan to score that many points in Baton Rouge against the team that has Shaquille O'Neal on it is impressive. Uh, but but if, if Devo Davis would have broke it, I would have felt better. If Trevin Brazil would have broke it, I I, at least he's put in two years. Uh, no, Devo would, would have been the only one that I would have been like, all right, I'm I'm good with it. Well, Devo would have been the main one that I would have said. Yeah, Devo would have been the one. Devo, or even, I, I wouldn't have had any complaints about Devo whatsoever. People would have been happy with Joe's opinion just because it had been an Arkansas kid. Yeah. But that being said, but you see what I'm saying? It's like you're you're are you gonna have Todd Days in this day and age? Yeah. Because well, even at that, just because the one and dones are so are so much of a thing now. Yeah. Then same thing with um um oh, and then same thing with the transfer portal. Just guys aren't gonna stay like that anymore. Um so yeah. Anyway, that was more time than I planned on talking about basketball, but that would yeah. awesome. I, I, I see your point. I'm like, yeah, records yeah. are made. All you right. Know. A couple of things real quick before we get into baseball. We're going to talk mostly about baseball here, uh, here coming up. But um, one of the things I wanted to just throw at you real quick, okay, a couple of social media deals. Okay, hit me with it. Just to hit you with, okay. Here's my qu first first question. Is Beyonce's new song a country song? Um, I've only heard it in Instagram reels. Um, so I've not listened to enough of it to tell you yes or no, but I will tell you this. I will listen to it and I'll have you a uh, an answer at the beginning of next week. I think it is just because like I don't think she's country. I don't think it's country in the traditional sense of the word, but I think new country, the people doing new country ain't country anyway. So, uh, you know, she grew up in the South. She grew up in Texas, you know, so, I mean, she put a little country beat to it. People yeah. are line dancing to it on TikTok and Instagram. So, well, I, I tell you what, it probably will pass for country because I've seen a bunch of crap. That um, Elmer or heard a bunch of crap on country radio that isn't country exactly. Um, so you know. now, if you go by, is it traditional country? No, not even close. Not even close. Okay. The other thing, do you do you watch or do you pay attention to Barstool Sports, Dave Portnoy? No, I do not. Uh, he he just adopted a dog. Okay. Okay, a pit bull uh -huh. named Peaches. Okay, and Peaches was. You can tell Peaches was probably not treated well by her last, you know, family or whatever. And uh, he was, uh, he got her from a, like a no-kill shelter, like in Atlanta or somewhere like that. And uh, I think it was, I may be wrong on where he got her, but somewhere. He yeah. got her, okay, he took her yeah, on. Obviously, he got her somewhere, Travis. He got her somewhere, okay. At a place. Dude, watching no. him, because, you know, he's a. He's a boisterous guy's guy. You know, he's a, you know, he's, he's like a hard talker kind of acts like he's a, you know, tough guy. Although he's not really a tough guy. He sort of acts like that all the time and everything, but dude, he's got this, this, this dog named peaches and he, dude, that dog is living its best life right now. <laughs> like he, <laughs> He, he talks to it like, hey, Miss Peaches. Hey, Miss Peaches. Like he, he does the dog voice, you know, that people do. And then he, uh, like, he went and got it a, a puppuccino. And he's like, Peaches, you're going to get all the puppuccinos you ever wanted, you know, and anytime you want one. And then, like, he brought it like a, like, he went to, like, a fancy restaurant in New York and brought it back a bone. From like his, like his steak there or something, and it was, and that dog just went like she was so happy, and like any time he walks by her, she throws her stomach out, and he stops to like rub on her stomach and kiss her and stuff. Like if you see, get a chance, watch it, dude. It's hilarious. See, because I got this is my dog over here. It's like hey, cookie dog, hey, the cookie dog. 
Yeah, just that's the way I talk. Yeah. Like all of them, they get your cookie dog. That's the way I talk to my dog. But one thing, you know, Portnoy is one of those guys, like some people love him, some people hate him, whatever. And he I, and it, and I'm that way with him. He gets political and all that kind of stuff. But one thing the guy does is raise money. You know, during during COVID, he ran he raised a lot of money for uh small businesses and, and invested in small businesses that were hurting. Well, he uh with this dog, he's raised just through like selling some t-shirts and hats with peaches on it, you know, uh -huh. picture on it and everything. He's raised like two hundred and seventeen thousand oh, dollars for wow. that the shelter where he got her from. Oh, that's cool. He said we're gonna cut it off there for that shelter, but anything else that we sell, anything else that comes in, we're gonna distribute among other shelters. No, that that is so that, that, is that that's a cool deal. He's taking something and you know, anyway. And she well, is a cute dog. Well, Travis, something I've been waiting for for over a decade is upon us. You, there's one thing you would count on back in the early 2000s to 2014 is that you would see someone such as myself lined up at a GameStop at midnight. Yep. On I can't remember what day video games came out on. It's been a long time. In South time. Arkansas, I'd go to Walmart. Yeah. But basically what would happen at midnight is they would start selling EA Sports, college football, whatever that year. And I would take off work the next day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was like a national call-in sick day because mm. you're going to be up to about three or four in the morning um, oh. doing that. No later nap. <laughs> yeah. But there'd not be a lot of sleep had. Yeah. I'd be like, but you'd play that. And, you know, I would always build Arkansas into an unstoppable juggernaut. Yeah. Like we'd have the number one recruiting class year after year. And then I'd get bored. Like, you know what? I'm going to take a demotion. I'm going to go play with Duke. Or I'm going to go play with Southern Miss. I'd go to one of the small schools and build them up. Um, but I, I'd always have fun with it. I'd never just go play with a juggernaut. You know, I'd go have fun. But, uh, yeah, EA Sports 2025 coming out. Big T, what are your thoughts? Man, um, okay. I'm mixed because – the only reason I'm mixed about it is because I don't really play video games anymore. Like wow. I don't, I don't have a, like I have a PS3 and oh, I just wow. use that to watch Blu-rays on. And uh, that's about it. So okay. I don't really, uh, I don't, I don't do any of that. So, <clears throat> however, this is where I'm at an advantage because I'm a, I'm a divorced father of two. So I have a son every other weekend and, you know, you know, over the summer and my ex-wife is very good about getting me extra time with Austin when we can get it. But I also have an Xbox one that my son plays. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, I want to tell you something, Travis, I'm about to flex on you, son. Are you, are you ready? I'm ready. You know who the all-time saves leader is, is in major league baseball. Who's got the career record in saves. Who's that? You may think the Sandman, Mariano Rivera, but no, it is yours truly right here, Clint Clark. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm getting ready to retire. I'm, a, I'm about to notch my 800 save on MLB 2K, the show. Nice. Uh, MLB the show, yeah. So it's, it's, listen. Yeah. I know. I'll, I, listen, we've been friends for a while. Don't know what this is awkward. Don't ask for my autograph. Yeah, uh, I'll try not to. Yeah. Is it, but so yeah, and so and I play Madden every now and then, but like, bro, the, the NCAA football just it hits different. Well, and that's what, and that's my point is, um, I'm excited for a new generation to get to experience it, um, yeah. because, uh, man, I I spent a lot of hours playing that, and and I'm excited about the new things. I'm excited about, uh, you know how they how they put the transfer portal in there. Yeah. You know, how are you able to go, you know, you pick up players from another team, you know, you you're playing through a season and all of a sudden, you know, you're playing, like say you're playing with Arkansas and all of a sudden there was a, a running back for uh, or wide receiver for Louisiana tech that you couldn't stop. Can you go get him? You know, 
can you remember that and go pick him up and say, Hey man, I remember that guy, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go get him or, uh, you know, are they going to incorporate the NIL? Or are you going to have to, oh, they are, they are incorporating NIL you know. and, and, well, and I did Google this because I wanted to be sure I got it right. And that's what I was in my phone. So the game, the first EA Sports college video game in 11 years will feature more than 11,000 players from 134 FBS team. Players who agree to appear will be paid $600 and receive a complimentary copy. Play, players who don't agree won't appear with generic avatars replacing them. So hmm. now this is me and you talk a little bit before the for the before the we started the podcast. And is that fair, yes or no? Yes. Okay. If you're one of the if you're like, you know, a Patrick Kudis, Andrew Chambly level player. Who we've had on the podcast, good players, it's fair compensation. I'd even and I'd even say, like, you know, some of the bigger names, Chris Poupal, Landon Jackson, it, it's fair. But like if you're Caleb Williams, you just won the Heisman Trophy. You know they're going, you you're coming back for your next year of college. Should you get the same compensation or should you be compensated a little bit extra? Because basically, there's a but I guess it's a take it or I mean, I get it that you know, we we're talking about you know, NFL, you've got 32 teams ran by billionaires that have to negotiate with they'll have a they'll have over 100 more teams and it's an 83 man roster. So I get it, maybe a little bit harder to negotiate. So that's why I was just curious. Your thoughts. well, they don't have the thing is, they don't have a, a players association, they don't have any kind of union. Uh, they're giving them this, um. You know, and and the players can they can either agree to do it or not. Okay, so they can either agree to take the six hundred bucks. When the truth is, a lot of these guys would probably do it just to get their name on a video game. Yeah, there's a whole lot of them that would just like you said, the Patrick Kudises, just to say, man, I'm on a video game, man. Here, kid, go play with you know, play with my character on there. Um, watch me run block. You know, what's you know, all that? Um, think about no. it, man. That's that's well, it, no, it'd be no, if I'm 20 years old, that's the freaking coolest. That's 51,000 per team, okay? 134, they're singing six million eight hundred and thirty four thousand dollars. That doesn't count, you know, let's say the the disc. The game itself cost them three dollars a piece to give to them. Okay, it, yeah. it's not going to cost them that much to make those six million dollars. They're investing in those players. Now, here's the smart thing about it. I think they're starting low. Which, what's the biggest thing we gripe about nil? is there was no limit to it, right? And it yeah. started out as they're paying them too much. It started out too high, and it needs to be reined back. And you can't rein it back because you've already put it out there, okay? And so at least they're starting this out. You know, if there's a ends up being a college baseball game, if there's a college basketball game ever, they're setting the standard on what that needs to be paid, okay? what the players need to be paid to be on those games and they're not doing it at a level to me. Okay. $6 million is a, is probably a good number for them to start out at. Okay. To see you know, if the, the game's going to go, it's going to sell well at first, just because people are going to be excited. It's back. People our age are going to go buy it just because they've missed having it. You know, they want to go back and, you know, I want to go back and create Wooster State University again. The Wooster and, State Wave. And 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 make them into the, the best team in the country. You know, um, that's that's what we want to, you know, there's just the nostalgia of it. It's going to sell, okay? But no, for sure. if it doesn't hit hard that first year, 
you know, then you'll have to see what it does the second year they do it. I think it'll hit hard. I think they'll do well. Um, I think it'll, you know, and it'll, I think the $600 will be a thousand dollars per kid before long, but no, I know. And I, I agree with you. It, it's going to be, it's going to be successful. People, th- there's a, there's a couple things that I, I'm wondering if they'll do um, just out of, just out of curiosity. Cause you remember back in the day, or maybe you never, maybe you were never this lonely, but I also know you were a lo- only child. So you probably were. So you would, uh, so you'd play NCAA and then you could upload the roster to Madden. See, I never, I never did that, but. So I, I, I mean, I could. did it. Yeah. You could do that. Problem was a lot of the guys didn't have names and stuff. And the other thing I was going to say is I, I don't have a regular Xbox 360 or anything like that. I don't have a PS3. But I think for a lot of the gamers that wanted and people that played college football since the last one was NCAA 2014, people that kept the rosters updated, you the real MVPs. You are. That's right. You you the real MVPs. So uh, that's right. Congratulations. Um now segue into the next thing is I know we want to spend some time on baseball, but we had another thing we want to talk about. So the playoffs start next year. Mm-hmm. Playoffs. And I, I read somewhere today in this bit. Now, if I read wrong, you know what? It is me and Travis running our mouths. I'm sorry. We messed up. If I got it right, then told you so. <laughs> 12 team playoff starts next year. Which is wild because to think Missouri and Ole Miss would have been playoff teams. Yeah. Next year. But the plan is that four teams get a bye and they'll be the four conference champions. I see one big issue with it. What do you see any issues with that, Travis? Well, doesn't that leave somebody out? No, because there's only four power four conferences now. Oh. There's the Pac 12s no more, so it's the big 17 and the big 16 and the ACC and of course the SEC. Well, then on the years you have an independent like a Notre Dame. See, that's the problem. Notre Dame could literally go undefeated and every in like the big 12 champion have three losses. Unlikely that that would happen, but it could happen. And then Notre Dame, sorry, you're the five seed. You don't get a bye. Yeah, it's as high as they could be in the seeding process. So I think that's a there's a flaw in the sauce there. But other well, than that, I like. I, but I think that goes to, you know, there's a lot of talk that they're trying to force Notre Dame into joining a conference. Yeah, they're trying to get them in to join in somebody, and this may be one of the ways they're trying to do that. Also, I don't know, um, but I'd well, like to ACC school and like everything else yeah like literally everything else like they're a sec i mean mm-hmm. an ACC school in basketball it may i mean it just it makes sense yeah so they've got a lot of big 10 rivalry so maybe if they did football too they could look into that um, and if you added notre dame to michigan ohio state penn state to me that's just a natural yeah, I, I tell you, I, I like the moves. I, I I like the moves the Big Twelve made in losing, um, losing Texas and Oklahoma. I know those were the two big dominoes that fell that kind of started going booty doo doo. Yeah, and, and so, so but but adding BYU and Cincinnati and UCF, the, the ones that they went after were good, really smart and. Yeah, them. it still won't be the same, but yeah. No, it ain't gonna be. The, no, it ain't gonna be the same, but yeah. I I don't know. I, I do think the time has to come where where football's got to split off from the rest of the NCAA. Yeah, it just it it it, it just it eventually. I mean, it just it make what they're doing makes no sense. Yeah, UCLA should not be in the same conference as Rutgers. No, they're on the opposite sides of the country. They're like literally four hours apart in time zones. Yeah. Makes, makes 
makes zero sense. But yeah. but I'm I'm excited about the playoff expanding next year. Yeah. Because you gotta admit, even as an Arkansas fan, it's gonna be hard to ever make it to the top two in the BCS. Yeah. But I think they well, can make it. Well, have you heard there's already talk about going to 14? I really so that then there would only be two buys, I'd assume. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. The top two teams would get a buy. Yeah. Which, see, you're never gonna they're never gonna agree on it. If 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 you did a 32 team playoff, people would argue about the 33rd team should have been in. Yeah. And and I, I there were there were some problems I would have had with the way it had been seated this year. Um but of course SMU it was moot point now is SMU's doing the ACC, which makes no sense. But because I've been to Dallas Fort Worth. Nothing about that screams to me Atlantic. No, no. No, not at all. No. Not at all. Well, Clint, we uh very coastal here in the Dallas metro area. That's right. Well, let's get to Arkansas. Speaking of the Dallas Fort Worth area. Yeah. Razorback baseball invaded that area this last weekend. They did. This is a team that, you know, had a good opening series against James Madison, you know, lost one game, uh, but won three of them. Uh, looked pretty good. People talking about the pitching. No, 100%. A, a hot topic. And uh, they go down to Fort Worth area, and the pitching continues to be the subject of discussion. Clint, Hagen Smith. Holy cow, dude. 17 strikeouts. 17 strikeouts. Like, that's throwing some phasers. (laughs) That's unbelievable. 17 strikeouts in one game uh the hogs pitching just man looks solid the whole weekend really now they lost uh was it oklahoma state they lost to they did it got two to two to one in 14 innings um i i, I but it, it can the, the only things that concern concerns me is the game's got a little squirrely late. Mm. And what I'm and there's one thing that Dave Anhorn does that I do not like, and I really hope he doesn't do that this year. Is he tends to like he'll like his ace, he'll try to put him in the bullpen to just keep him from when he needs him. Mm. I, I really think he should keep more of a Friday starter type. I, I want him to keep Hagen Smith as the Friday starter. Yeah. Where he, that's where he should be. I, th- I think, you know, you, you said that people are talking about the pitching. Um, really, I think Friday, Saturday is should be settled. I think it should be Hagen Smith and Brady Tiger. And I think, you know, yeah. Brady, and I, Brady Tiger on any other team in the country is the Friday starter. Yeah. I mean, there may be one or two schools, but Brady Tiger's pretty freaking good, and he's looked wow. he's looked amazing. From um, what I'm hearing, the only team that they say he's got better pitching than Arkansas, top to bottom, is probably Wake Forest. I think. Yeah, like well, their top their top four, their top four pitchers are ranked in the top seventeen in the nation. I yeah. think something like that, and ours. I ranked in the top 60, uh, which is pretty amazing to begin with. No, that, no that, that's – well, you got let, – let's just talk. Hagen Smith, your Friday starter as of right now, um, just 17 strikeouts. Yeah. Um, And then you go to Saturday and you're starting Brady Tiger. And that was against Oregon State, so it wasn't like it was – Yeah, no, no. In, you in, know, in, the Sisters for the Poor, okay. All these teams are good, you know. I mean, I don't think Oklahoma State or Michigan were ranked, but I believe they were both College World Series teams last year. 
Yeah. Um, and we had a well, and, and Oklahoma State's become a pretty good rival for us. Yeah, it, it, you know, no, it, it definitely has, and we mm-hmm. we'll be playing them in football the next couple of years, so that'll be uh, that'll be a fun. But you know, well, and then Oregon State, of course, you know, I didn't watch. I don't it want to talk about it. What yeah, I didn't watch it because number one, I don't have flow sports. Um, yeah, I Paul's got flow sports, but I didn't. I'm like, I don't watch this. Um, then, uh, you know. Then Friday when we played Oklahoma State, Tiger pitched. And then uh, Molina, I'm brain farting on his first name. Yeah, um, I can't I, remember it either. I'm no, I know it's not Yachty. Yachty. Um, yeah. But, you know, Molina, um, transfer from Texas Tech, I believe. Yeah. He's, he's been the Sunday starter. Mm. Um, he, he's looked very, 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 very impressive. Mm. And then um, Colin Fisher. True freshman from Oklahoma. Yeah. I know I just Googled it. I broke my Google rules. I, that's twice I've Googled. Um, but he was co freshman of the week. Mm. Uh, Hagan Smith was pitcher of the week for yeah. obvious. Um, and then you got Will McIntyre out the dugout. Yeah. I mean, it's five. Um, that's five of them that you're like, wow. Um, the only thing that concerns me is it seemed like it got to the bullpen a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and they, they struggled a little bit. I, I, I'm not worried about it when it comes to SEC play because I think that that rotation will really shrink. Mm. And he's probably giving a lot more guys opportunities than he will later because, you know, he can. Well, he's trying to see. So, yeah, see who you got. And then when it comes to SEC play, he'll like, okay, you know, but – it's one of the deals where you may not get your opportunity for a while. Again, yeah. you better make the most of it and prove what you got. But um, they were lambasting poor Grambling today. Like I was telling you on the phone. Well, and, and, and the offense may have got a good chance to get some confidence, you know, that, uh, you know, game like Grambling may be a good uh, slump buster. Well, it was – Six to nothing before an out was recorded in the ball game. Yeah. So that that tells you they were going to at least bat around. Yeah. So that and they just well they struggled against Grambling last year. Mm. I think they, I think they put Tiger in like way sooner than they wanted to because they were struggling. But it's like fourteen to nothing in the game. It was going to be a run ruler. Yeah. Left, if Grambling came back, then I will be shocked and yeah. disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but really a lot of a lot of the bats look lively. Um, I, this team's going to be good. It's going to be good, and anytime you get pitching, and it always takes a little bit longer for the offense to catch us up mm. because if you look, you know, football defense always just dominates the offense early on, um, and I think that was kind of what happened with the baseball team a little bit, but. Man, I, I'm excited about seeing where their season goes. I, I was I was saying during basketball season, like, say it's DVH, your only hope. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, th- th- this team, this team, uh, this team's gonna be good, and I'm I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to see how far far these arms can take us. Yeah. I'd be disappointed if we didn't wind up in Omaha. Of course, I say that about every baseball team we have. And that's the thing about Razorback baseball. Of course, now. <laughs> I hate to say this because we could have said that about basketball for the season two as we get sweet 16 and lead eight almost every year. Uh, yeah. But baseball has done it over a longer time competed. Oh, well, I mean, competed comes, for uh, Omaha yeah. every year. When it comes to baseball, we're a blue blood. We're a blue blood. Now. Yeah. It is. I mean, football and basketball, we're on the outskirts. Yeah. Uh, I think we're all. I mean, it paints as Arkansas fans, but it comes to baseball, we're 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 blue blood program. Yeah, blue blood, blue blood. There you go. Yeah, Van Horn knows what he's doing, man, and he's uh, uh, he's doing it well, doing well, it well. He's built a machine up, doing there. it, and doing it, and doing it well. Representing Queens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. Is that what it, I may have messed it up? I'm sorry, LL Cool J. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. Hey. So LL Cool J. If you ran into him at like the butcher shop, like the one guy. Yeah. What What would you do? Well, see, 
I tell you what I do. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you go first. And I just came up with it. Okay. Um, I've changed the way I meet famous people. Yeah. I don't. I decided a while back. I'll tell you where it happened. Okay, tell me about it. I worked at a church camp in at called Super Summer. I used to yeah. volunteer for it or whatever. Well, one year, uh, I remember, I know where you're going. So. My my main staffer was Matt Jones, or one of my staffers was Matt Jones, the quarterback for the Razorbacks at the time, for you. right before his senior year. Okay, yeah. and I saw the way just walking around at a church camp. He's there to to serve, right? He's there just to help these kids out and just to be there. And I saw grown men going to the store and buying their kids every SEC magazine they could find with Matt Jones on the cover and bringing them to this camp so their kid could get Matt Jones to sign these yeah. magazines. And I sit there and I saw the way he was treated. And me and a buddy of mine, we would just, we would just like become de facto like security guys. Cause like he would walk into the worship service and people would just gather around him. Like he would have to be just pushing them aside and so me and this guy from my church, we just started, we became good, good buddies with him during that week. And so we just pushed him aside. Hey, say, y'all leave him alone. Let him, you know, he's, you know, just leave him alone. Well, <clears throat> I saw that. And as I thought about it, I'm like, man, he can't even be a regular person. So ever since then, when I meet someone famous, I just go up to them and I like just shake their hand. I look them in the eye and I thank them for whatever it is they've meant to me yeah so i just say like i met toby mac one time the um you know from dc talk back in the way hello d yeah and i said i said hey toby and like all these people were getting stuff signed and i just walked up to him i shook his hand i said hey man i just want to thank you i said i said i was a kid that liked rap but i wanted to listen to christian music and for a long time, you were the only thing I had out there to listen to that had the two. And I just say, I want to appreciate it. And, uh, and just keep going. I love this new generation that's getting to hear you and, and everything. And he's like, man, thanks for saying that, dude. And he like gave me a bro hug, you know? And of course, then I went out to my youth group. I'm like, tell me, man, give me a bro hug. <laughs> but anyway, um, so, you, you know, know, but anyway, so if I saw it, oh, cool, Jay. I would go up to him, I would shake his hand, and I'd be like, dude, Mama Said Knock You Out is one of my favorite songs of my youth. Thank you for writing that, and thank you for putting that out in the universe. So, yeah. That, that'd be something like I would say, probably. So, I would walk up on my phone like, yeah, okay. No, no, I got you. All right. Okay. All right. Hey, L L O Cool J, my mama just said to knock you out. <laughs> 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 and by the way, I literally just came up with that. As a, yeah, that's a good one. That's good, yeah. It's like, hey, hey, hello, cool. Jay. No, I, I try to, you know, when I meet famous people, like I try to no sell it. Yeah. Like I'm not impressed. Like your presence does not impress me. Yeah. I guess that's the wrestler in me trying to not mark out. Yeah. Like, for example, I, I went to jujitsu one time. I got there a little bit early, I got my bag, and go change in the bathroom. Steve Snyder's out in, in the lobby talking to Chris Daughtry, whose son's trying class. And Snyder's talking to him. Like, I walk by and go, hey, man, what's up? And I walk in, change, and I walk back in there, and I go start stretching, you know, after a change. And I'm like, don't – and Steve's like, man, you handled that perfect. I'm like, dude, I don't know what the big deal is. I've seen karaoke before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> like, but I was, like, I was like, no, I'm not going to give you the satisfaction. Of, I'm like, I'm just like, no. You mean like, Chris I'm, Allen? Huh? Chris Allen or Chris? I've never met Chris Allen. Daughtry, I met Daughtry. He lives in Arkansas. No, he lives in Greensboro. This is when I was in North. Oh, okay, got you. Yeah, yeah, he lived in. No, he. Yeah, no. And I thought you were talking about in Little Rock area. Yeah, the same thing. I've met you know, and at the movie there, I've met Judge Reinhold, and uh, I've met Jermaine Taylor. Came in back before you know that became a whole thing. Yeah, Um, back when he was the middleweight champion of the world. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we uh so yeah, it, it was uh, a I'll, I'll never forget I was in the airport one time and uh 
it was in Little Rock, and Jake Beckett was there, and it was right after he graduated. Yeah. So, you know, he had just finished with the Hogs. He had just got signed by – I can't remember. Did he get drafted or just signed with the He signed the third. I Patriots. think he drafted in, like, the third round. He just didn't. Yeah. But he's he, made- going, he, was, he was going to the Patriots. And so, right. like, there were several people. He was at just Starbucks getting him some coffee, and, like, he's sitting there at the – like, they have a little, like, a bar there you know, with a little stool and he's sitting at the stool or whatever. And people were walking by and be like, let's check back. And like the dude's right there. And people are walking by, like talking, whispering about him and stuff like that. And I was like, man, he's not an animal at the zoo, you know? And so I, I went through Starbucks and got me something to drink. And I walk, I had to, on the way out, I had to walk by him. I'm like, I just put my hand on his shoulder, said, Hey man, how you doing? I said, uh, I said, I loved watching you play, man. Thanks for entertaining me for so many years. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, you, he's like, Oh man, thanks for saying that. I said, I said, you excited about new England? He's like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, I said, now is this, are you, is that where you're headed now? And like, we just had like a regular conversation, you know, yeah, I think me and you are both pretty good at that. You know, yeah. we, like I like 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 I ran into like Kevin Owens at the airport, uh, WWE wrestler, and I gave him like the bro nod. Yeah, because so I'm like I I don't want to bug them at the airport because I know they're busy traveling. Like I ran into because I you know Vegas is one of my favorite spots. I ran into like Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, they're the same guy by the way. Um, I ran into them at the airport and just bro nodded him because you know they're they just want to get to where they're going and they don't want to talk to me. But I got to uh, tell you about one of my favorites. Uh, <laughs> um Rick me and you meeting Rick Flair is still gonna be one of my oh, yeah, I, oh yeah that's that's one of the best but uh in college I got to work a Christian concert in Little Rock with uh some buddies of mine. We helped we helped set up and then we also helped security for it or whatever. And so and we got to hang out there that day at the State House Convention Center. And so um it was audio adrenaline which they were a big band in the nineties. You know, they were, I saw them like six or seven times. They're one of my favorite bands. And I saw um, them zero times. Huh? I saw them zero times. Oh, really? Concert um, I think, but. Actually, you saw them one time. Did I, did they open for DC Talk or something? They opened for DC Talk in Dallas when we went. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but anyway, um, so we're, the lead singer, okay, is Mark Stewart. He had, like the spiky hair that people would do where they put like gel in it to make it look like it was messy. Uh, oh yeah. But it wasn't messy. You know what I mean? Like it was playing like, that like, way. Uh, oh, I just woke up. Look. Oh. Yeah. But it, yeah, but it, that, so that's what he wore all the time. Right. And so my buddy, Mike Floyd was with me, friend of the program. And we're, yes, we had just, we had just set up, like, you know, we set up the stage, we'd set up the, all the different stuff, whatever. And then the band starts showing up and we had met this one band. They were weird, man. They were, they came walking through. We sort of said hi to them. We didn't really know much about them, but like the lead singer had like bleached blonde hair and all the, his, and his three backup guys looked like the Beatles. They had like the Beatles long hair haircut, you know, and stuff. It was, they were weird, man. They were, they were strange. But anyway, here comes audio adrenaline walking out. They had just got there and they were heading up to their room. And so, uh, Mike is there and he's kind of walking by and that Mark Stewart, the lead singer for audio adrenaline is they're just kind of walking by and Mike go, just looks at and goes bad hair day. (laughs) And Mark Stewart's like, what? Uh, he didn't know what to say at first. He's like, oh man, I actually planned it like this. <laughs> so, like, just a, was it like, was he making a sarcastic comment back or was he like, oh, he's like, he was joking. He's like, just kind of laughing. He's like, man, I planned it like this. And Mike just starts laughing. He goes, man, I'm just messing with you. And uh, anyway, dude, it was, we ended up like, uh, like the guitar player, well, there was a guy with us that the, the, uh, he, he sang and wrote his own music. Anyway, he was, 
he, the guitar player for them who wrote a lot of their songs, sat down with him and looked over some of the songs he had wrote and gave him some critiques and stuff. Anyway, it was a real cool, real awesome. cool day. That's also when I got a job offer to be a sound guy on Bob Dole's campaign. Hmm. And I had to turn it down because I was in college at the time. But sometimes you could have been, I, you could have been with a second I, presidential candidate. I know. I could have, yeah. Anyway, that could have that could have launched you because I mean I've always said like you you like when you're go to leave with Travis, it's like quit running for governor. Let's go, buddy. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm like so yeah, that could have been that could have launched you. And I mean, I'm like uh, you know, you hey, and have, for that time it was ninety six, I think. Yeah, I turned down. It was the guy offered me thirty thousand a year. Which you got to remember at that time, a starting teacher was making twenty four thousand a year. Yeah, twenty five. Okay, uh, thirty thousand a year plus a apartment in Cincinnati, Ohio, because that's where our home base would be. All my living expenses paid, and of course, I'd had to live. I would have had to live on a bus while we traveled just for like setting up and running sound even back then you weren't fit for a bus no like, well, you know, i was more fit than i am now but i mean obviously but yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> yeah that's my mean comment of the day yeah no, no anyway it's, it's one of those things you're like man it might have been cool to go do that for a while well no that would get old real, real i mean because it's not like Listen, I mean, like, if you go, like, to some of these campaigns, you know, like, now, like, you're going to see some color for characters. Well, no, but, I mean, I would have been just doing that for a little while, and then I would have been doing, like, a concert for somebody else, you know. Like oh, okay. Oh, okay. Else. I think you would have been, like, you never know, dude. It you could never have been know who you would have worked for. Like, he told me some of the people he had worked for. Like, he had done Willie Nelson. He had done, like, other rock bands. He had done, like. They're just hired out. Like whoever could afford them hired them out, and they just went and you know they had all this equipment and and you they just go set it up and run it. You know they're just hired hired guns or whatever. And a dude offered me a job because I worked hard that day and kind of knew what I was talking about when you know when or what he was talking about when he would tell me what to do. So anyway, it was a it was kind of cool. I'd never you know. Could have been the new lead singer of Hootie and the Blowfish. You don't know. I could have been. I could have been Hootie. That's could right. Could have happened. Anyway. Well, dude, looks like we made it through another one. Yeah, dude, man. Uh, we're we're well. I don't even know where we're at anymore. We're up there. One forty-two. This one forty-two. One forty-two. Yep. would have been doing this for over three years now. Yeah, yeah. Crazy to think yeah. about. We're over it all. Yeah, we we've uh, we've missed a few weeks, you know, just the life has got in yeah. the way. We've been pretty consistent about it, and I man, I'm yeah. I'm, we as long as you guys will keep as long as we got like four or five people that want to listen to us, we'll keep doing it. So, That's right. If nothing else, because I love the sound of my own voice. <laughs> well, folks, uh, I'm excited because American Idol's back. I did watch. I did watch an audition today because you know I'm, I'm I'm not an American Idol type guy, but I did see Loretta Lynn's granddaughter audition. She did good, didn't she? She she did good. Completely different from Loretta. So um, hey, but there's a girl in that episode, the second episode, mm -hmm. that the last she's the last one on that episode they showed. The best audition ever on Idol. Okay. Clint, and your child was on the last one. Clint, this one, she, like, it's not the most emotional. Like, you know, there's a, there's been better stories and stuff like that. But this girl sang amazingly. So much so, like, the, the crew, like, all the people in the background you never see, like, all the producers and the, people running sound and stuff were applauding at the end of it. Like you oh, could no. hear them applaud. And Lionel Richie said, we've never had the crew applaud before. Yeah. We've never had them do that. So, you know, cause they can take that out, you know, in post or whatever, if the crew does applaud, you know, to where it's just the, 
the judges applaud or whatever. But like she was that good, man. Yeah. She was she's like she's by far the favorite to win it all. Well, you remember when of course I didn't ever watch American Idol really. I mean, I I, I wasn't a never been a big singing competition guy. Um, but I do remember like when Carrie Underwood auditioned and Simon Cow goes, You're gonna go on to sell more records than anybody that's ever been on this show. Yeah. But he just was like, Yeah, and she's and that's the thing, she's the gold standard. You know, well, she, I mean, she's by far the gold standard. And and but a lot of it's reason hers was so good. I mean, it was a great tryout, but what she did afterwards, you know, as far as through the oh, whole yeah. competition. Well, you know, we and so about- it's gonna be remain to be seen on this girl. If she can continue to do it, but she did, sang a Billie Eilish song, and uh, man, just just and I mean, like I'm, before the song, like Katy Perry said, "Oh, I love that song." She does such a good job on it. She go and she looked at her and said, "Please do a good job on it," because <laughs> it's one of those. It's such a good song. She's like, Let's "Don't mess it up. up." Yeah, and so want to go in there. She bang. She bang. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what i'd have to do on there yeah. but uh man she killed it dude all that, right loretta lynn's daughter was good too and she she uh and that song she sang was emotional yeah it, yeah it'd be it, i'm not gonna watch the i'm not gonna watch the season but i'll be interested how far she goes well if you don't watch the season just get on youtube and watch some of the yeah, Some well, the clips. You know, I mean, the thing about that show is you don't have to win it to to make a career, and that's and that's the thing. The the freaking Adam Lambert got second place, and he's the lead singer of Queen. He's doing all right. Yeah, um, but oh. I mean, even, even at that, there's nobody from any other singing competition show that's really broke out like that. No, that, I mean, that's the one that. Yeah, that that's a lot the, of it is is because it's so tough. It's such a tough competition. Yeah, you know that. You know, I mean, hey, pressure makes a diamond, right? There you go. Now, there was on the first day, first episode, there was a girl that this is the emotional, and she was good, too. She but probably the most emotional of the tryout so far is this girl that <clears throat> she was, well, she's in her 20s, but she was ad- adopted, and her parents told her she was adopted at a young age, okay? Well, she um her she went to her she found out her birth mom had died in an accident or something i don't i can't remember how her birth mom died right <clears throat> but she um yeah, they're gonna make everyone sad is what they do so but she wanted to reach out to her birth family when she was in her 20s and so her mom said she would help her do that well they were while she's trying out, they're in the middle of trying to get together with her birth family. And so to surprise her, her mom's sister and some of her birth family, like uh, uh, blood family are there waiting when she gets through trying out. Come, okay? rip, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Rip your heart. I mean, out. Y'all, y'all stop. Rip it out. Just rip it you're, out. You're, y'all, Just listen, take my heart. I, it's like it's like uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know. Just rip your heart out and watch it beat. Because you're you're like about. you're all goo goo, and I'm like I want to throw up because like you guys are trying too hard now. <laughs> you're, you're trying. Well, too hard. well then, uh, so <clears throat> she sings and she sings awesome. She sings a Zach Williams song, Arkansas guy. Uh, sing, uh Zach and Dolly, and uh, sings it, and they're like. You know, she plays piano. She does a great job. Well, then they're like, is your family here? And they, so of course her family comes in. Her birth family's there. She'd been on video chat with them. So she had seen them before on video, but she's there, you know, they're there and they're hugging her and everything. And everybody's all excited and crying. Well, then um, they tell, you know, she tells them that her mom was a musician. And that her mom has songs on like iTunes and or like Apple and stuff. And so they're like, Katie goes, well, do you know any of your mom's songs? And she goes, yeah, there's, I I could sing Tumbleweed. Well, she gets on and starts singing Tumbleweed, which by the way, she's going to record and it's going to be a hit. Yeah. (laughs) Cause 
it's just awesome song and she does an awesome job singing it and they have a video of her mom singing it that they show on there and she does sound almost exactly like her mom anyway sorry that's your american idol update hey, you know i feel I'm, I'm all caught up now i'm all caught up you're all caught up on all things american Idol. that's right that's all you need to know yeah, yeah there you go so we we we'll, we'll be and this is Katy perry's last year so i'm applying to be the third judge don't know if I can feel, I don't know if I can feel Katie's dresses. No, you can feel them and then some, buddy. <laughs> anyway, well, folks, like, share, hit that subscribe button. We need the subscribers. Come on, that's right. We need you to comment, oh. like, share, subscribe. Let people know about this. If you enjoy what we're talking about, if you enjoy just the break from the monotony of the world and hearing us talk about nonsensical things. And some sensical. But mostly. You like just seeing the donkeys in the background. Or the, the flamingo. Or the flamingo. The flamingo. Then, hey. Feminist propaganda. Yeah. I don't know about that Boston Red Sox deal, but hey, whatever. I don't like it either. I'm a, I'm a yeah. cardinal. Anyway, folks, uh, seriously, please share, share, share a lot. Thanks so much. God bless. Peace. Sweat, wood, filthy, dirt, harvest, hurt, kingdom come. When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more than I hurt Cry in your kingdom come Listen I wake up in the morning I bow my head to pray Mama told me if I don't Ain't nothing gonna change These prayers breaking up hard drive So I can sow the seed in a bread and no aches and pain Lord knows I gotta follow his lead That's why I swear When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more